Hello. I'm here to talk and coach about my Albert now. I'm going to recap on what we've done. Uh, for this cycle, we've gone over their gifts and strengths and interest. Very, very, very important because it's really that our motivation comes from our interest. And you know, our drive is horrendously strong. We, uh, we really got to use their strengths. So um, next, we went over what anger and shame may have developed, which is the learning uniqueness checklist, um, due to having a narrow difference and how we can help with those. And now, today, we're on the third screening, which is looking at the learning difference itself. So this is just a screening, it's not a diagnosis. It's to streamline people so they know exactly what specialist to see and to help you exactly to see what you need to work on to help each individual child because they're all very different. So if you are being coached by me, the screening would be here. And remember, you're gonna have to put it in rebrandly because each child will have their own rebrandly link because it's set to my original, okay? And then that way I can see it on my side. But you'll have to use rebrandly. And the form is here for it, and it looks like this. There we go. You're gonna get their name. Now, little, you're gonna start off finding out their interest, not what type of, if they like uh, building with Legos or things like that. This is, do you like reading? Well, major, you know, y'all know the answer to that one, right? Uh, do you like to write, right? You can make notes on what they say. Let me go back for a second. If they say they like to read, okay? They say yes. You say, oh, I get you. You like books. You like people to read to you. But do you like to read? See, that's where you're gonna make notes. It's gonna say, yes, they said they like reading, but no, they don't like to read themselves. I gotta have, add that preface in there, right? Do you like ha your handwriting? That's very important because you'll wanna know, um, cause you'll be checking their fine motor skills by asking questions in a survey. So you'll also wanna know, are you gonna be working with cursive on? Because cur cursive is the answer for their handwriting. And I have a cursive class, correct? Enrichment class. Do you like math? Okay. First, we look at their visual processing. I was explaining to Susan this a little while ago. Um, I finally got my first text from a parent that made me the happiest I've probably ever been. She goes, um, my child got a diagnosis of neurodiversity with auditory and visual processing. That's what her diagnosis was. I was like, yes, yes, yes. She said, but she still needs help on spelling. So that's why she's seeing me. She's seeing the correct people to work out her visual processing problem. And that includes a developmental behavior optometrist and or an uh, OT that has visual processing therapy. Okay, uh, certification. And then for her, um, for her audiological processing problem, she's seeing either A, an audiologist, but what looks for central auditory processing disorder. I don't know who she's specifically seeing or she's getting with somebody who's like trained in knee house or, or Gillingham or something like that to help with the processing. So again, they, I'd love to see that somebody said that. And that's what they're, they're gonna start getting from me is saying neurodiversity with visual processing problems, neurodiversity with auditory. Hey, how about both? That's how most people work. There's research that says it's 80% both auditory and visual that's causing these reading problems in kids, right? Um, my own data is showing 60%, but everybody's different. Some, their visual processing problem might be more than their auditory, but it's still there now. So we're gonna address the visual first, then the auditory. And some people, it's the opposite. Their auditory processing is, is worse than their visual processing. So this would be me, by the way. 
It's majority auditory next visual. So if I had grown up seeing a real tutor, not a tutor that just works on reading like one that was Orton Gillingham trained, that would have made much more difference on my ability to, but I also had central auditory processing disorder. So I had seen all it. Anyway, so uh, if then if I would have gotten some of that fixed up and then go to the work with visual processing, getting vision therapy and or prism grasses, man, I would have gotten a lot of help that I needed at a younger age. So the whole thing is streamlines and comparing so they get this and they know exactly which specialist to see, okay? That's the whole point, not wasting time or money and getting the kid needs, kids needs met quicker. So for visual processing, you're gonna get them to write these words. Um, they're not going to see them. You're just gonna read them out to them. They're gonna put them on blank copy paper. It's very important to put on blank copy paper. So they have no direction uh, or help on where they're going to be placing the words. Okay, so um, you're going to read the words out to them. This side is phonetic, this side is sight. Kids that have visual processing problems have more problems with sight. Kids with auditory have more problems with phonetic. And I can explain all the reasons why. So it's very important to do go back and forth, say cap, spell cap. Also, I can put it in a sentence if you need, but you can only repeat the word twice, okay? So they miss three or four in a row, you're gonna stop. But go back and forth from auditory, I mean, uh, phonetic and sight, okay? Now, this is what you're gonna see. It's a visual processing problem. You're gonna, the first one is asking the parents. You're not gonna be able to fill this out from their uh, writing sample. Uh, I do have to say something else. Sometimes um, parents don't want this assessment. So before I begin with the child, I say, oh, it's okay, because I know where they're gonna be. They're gonna be in class one. We're gonna be working on this foundational phonics skills, making sure they're processing them correctly. So they can just send me a writing sample. That would be very helpful. You know, just send me a writing sample that they've done on copy paper. Uh, but you're gonna ask them, uh, do they have trouble seeing the difference between letters, shapes, and objects? That means when they were younger, did they have problems learning their letters, basically? So that you can't get from that sample. Um, visual, uh, figure to ground discrimination, and struggle to distinguish the shape and letter from its background. Try a search and find. So this again is from another asking the parent, do your child, does your child have problems with search and finds? I used to do them in person when I was an in-person tutor, um, search and finds to see if they had problems. Now I just realized, and I guess you could pull it up on the computer, search and find. I'm just gonna ask the parents the first two, okay? Next, uh, visual sequencing issues. Find difficult to see shapes, letters, words in the correct order. So then they'll do transpositions. May skip lines and read the same line over and over is another thing. but. You can tell transpositions like this. Let me give you a word, cat. Okay, so a transposition would be like this. Now, it's on, it's on a continuum. So if it's worse for the child, this is how they do cat, tack. That's a transposition. That is a visual processing problem. Obviously, the, the sounds were auditorily processed correctly. It was when they would visually put that input and in sequencing discrimination is a problem. That's visual. And they won't see it any difference. So you will not see them ever erase this. They will not see it any different. Mm. Yeah, for that's a hard one because this is so interesting to me. When your parent asks you to look for dysgraphia, dysgraphia, you'll see all kinds of erase marks. That's a great way to know if it's dysgraphia because um, they will see the difference. If it's visual processing, they will not. There'll be no erase marks. So um, visual motor processing issues, trouble using what they see to coordinate with the way they move, may struggle to write within lines or bump into objects uh, when while walking. So you can ask about the bumps and the 
walking and the problems with that, which is the gross motor. But this one, you'll look to see how they did it on the paper. So I'll have to draw this one. You do it on white copy paper with no lines because you'll see this. Okay, so when they have problems with these discrimination issues, there'll be uh, overlapping of letters horizontally and then large spaces also. And vertically, you'll see overlapping and then again, like large spaces. So you can see it like down here a little bit more, but you'll look at the spacing for this. And I gotta make a point on this. How many times have they seen it written out with perfect? Right and perfect thing. It's visual discrimination. Let me give you the correct name. Hold on. I don't have a lot. Yeah. Visual motor processing problem. That's what it is. Oop, name is back. Okay. So um, so if it's visual long-term, short-term visual memory problems, they struggle to remember shapes, symbols, objects that they've seen causing with reading and spelling, writes random letters and struggles with sight words and nonsense words and better with phonetic words. So this is the opposite of what I said here. Recording in progress. Oh, are you on there twice? There you are. Let's see, which one of you? Oh, okay. So, um, so okay. So what I said was here, they're gonna be stronger at sight words if it's, if it's gonna be stronger at sight words if they are, if it's auditory processing. If it's visual processing, they're gonna be weaker with sight words, right? Um, so because the child who's good at auditory is gonna be, uh, I mean, who's good at auditory will have problems with sight words. That would be a good sign to say it's this uh, short or long-term visual memory issues. Okay, so that's a very big problem if they're not good at sight words because that's visual. Um, now, visual spatial issues, trouble understanding objects in space, unsure how close they are to one another. Uh, so this one is, you already checked the spacing in the handwriting for the one above. So this is where you can ask them also, because this overlaps with that one, does your child have problems copying words or ever complain about copying words? Or does the teacher, uh, here's a good example, has the teacher moved them closer to the board and, and complained to you about them having visual, I mean, vision issues when you've got their eyes checked a hundred times? You understand me? So that means it's not a vision issue. See, I have glasses because I'm getting older and I have a vision issue, but my visual processing is also off. They're separate. But uh, I've, known a, I've noticed in my own observations, a correlation. If they have glasses, they also, 60% of those that have glasses have also had visual processing issues. Yep, and I can explain it in the brain and why, but. Um, so you'll have to ask the parent about that one. Now, this is a big one, visual closure issues, difficulty identifying an object when only parts of it are showing. So this is where they had a hard time learning their letters, but you can also, um, where they're not doing full, full formation of letters, by the way. Um, but this is also where you could just look at the O's and A's. <laughs> they're O, when they're writing, oh look, my, oh look, I, I compensated. I compensated. Um, I did this. So that way I could definitely close up my A. So you know, you're gonna know there's different compensations that have been developed because I'm 46. But I imagine when I was young, my A's were like this. Uh, they were never fully closed up. And my O's were also 
like this. And in uh, Trisha? Yeah. Or closed up. Good question. I had a student yesterday who thought my A was a Q mm -hmm. um, because I had a, because of the, you know, the stick, but it was, it wasn't long at all. He just, it wasn't even the ones that you wrote up at the top there, that middle A beside your, to the left of that O. Mm -hmm. it, it looked a little more like that. Mm. I mean, it was a short, but, but, but because it went out to the right, mm -hmm. he said, now, is that a Q or an A? Did you, did you write a Q or an A? Well, he's over evaluating, I guess. And that's neurodivergency where we have very strong hyper evaluation skills of color, shape, size, dimension, chant, meter, rhyme, and pattern. So we got a hyper a hyper arousal in that area. So I think he's just over evaluating it. Okay. Because there's nothing with visual processing that's going to be showing or seeing something that's longer than it is that I can imagine. I hope I'm addressing that correct. But we hyper process everything that's visual. So uh, he wrote one for me to explain what he was saying, and it had a, a serif on it that was a little bit longer on the A. Yes, and so he said, and I and I told him sometimes in cursive, you know, that's there so that it can connect to the next letter, oh. and he said. He's only Just allowed. Ask him on. Have y'all been working on cursive? Because it's confusing. No, but he he said in school he's only allowed to write cursive, and so I think it. I think he. I just think there's some confusion there. But I don't know. Yeah, it can be confusing. Uh, so let's see. So uh, let's see the next one. So letter reversals. So this is the one letter and symbol reversal issues. So. Uh, B and D and W and M and P and Q. And the best thing you can do to look to see is if they have capitals, because that's how they compensate is by doing capitals, because there's no way they're confused. Let's do a D. A D. There's no B and D confusion when you have it capitalized, right? Right. As you look so um, they're going to do compensating with capitals. So look for lots of capitals. Um, that was just because I'm on the computer. But that's the one above it where you just want to have visual closure. You're just going to overdo it too. So right. Okay. Um, so, okay, next. Oh, and then you put it on a continuum. It's funny because I'm neurodivergent. I don't work. I don't work on a, I'm non-linear. That's why things can go everywhere, but I'm actually compensated by doing continuum. So put everything on a continuum and then I'm good, but it's a graphic one that I can see in my mind, which is even more interesting. So I'm scaffolding everything in my mind. So I love continuums, it's ridiculous. And I, and I love seeing things on a continuum because then you can't compare it to what people say they're supposed to be it's exactly which who the child is that so on a continuum you look and you can count out of those eight what percentage and there are three you know so let's say so anything above a two will need intervention for so anything above a two will need intervention for and not only that, sending them to who they need to see. So if it's visual processing, remember it's a developmental behavioral optometrist and or a OT with visual, proce uh, visual processing therapy certification or vision therapy certification. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna read all that. Okay, so auditory processing, you check the sounds. Um, you start off with just uh, say about 95% of my kids still aren't processing the initial phonemes. It doesn't matter how old they are because when it's like this, ah, they're not processing it. If it's ah, they're processing it. 
Now, when they when people have taught them to go, ah, 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 that's the same thing as holding it out. But that's the worst thing you can do because we don't repeat sounds when we say don't. We don't go tr 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 Trisha. So then they're gonna have to they're gonna have to delete two trs before they get to my name or to write it or spell it. But they, that's why they do that is to, to hold it out. So I want them holding out for better processing of those letters that can be held. For those that can't are those that are explosive that need to be cut short. When they're cut short, they're gonna make them harder, louder, faster. So, b. See, it's harder, louder, faster versus b. <laughs> okay, so you don't want any, uh, you don't want any schwa in there because then they're gonna have to cut it off. And I've seen where they don't even cut it off yet that they still write out bu when they're spelling bat. Crazy, right? So, k, d, e, G, I, J, K, O, See, that's what it needs to sound like for better processing. That's why it's only 95% of my, it's 95% of my kids that need to start on this first level class. The other 5%, this is what I've noticed, which I found is very interesting. They could go to those, some of the best dyslexia schools in the nation, because, you know, I get kids from all over, right? So they've gone to the best schools. I'm like, what school did they go to, you know? And or uh, they have a parent or they're seeing a... Um, or it has OG training, but it has seen where what the difference is between just hearing a sound and processing a sound and understanding auditory processing. So, um, so anyway, I write that down. And you, you can go to words too, because you remember you got to look at this this one because these are the phonetic words. But trust me, you don't really need to even look at that initial uh, writing sample when you're writing these sounds out. You'll know because they have problems. Here we go, with confusions and I and E especially. Let's look at I and E. E, E, E. You can make the I a lower boring sound to just make it distinct versus E, which is the exciting one that goes back here. So when they're, when they're doing it, if there's a confusion there, it's gonna be both gonna be E. E is gonna be E and I is gonna be E, especially if you're from the South. <laughs> because then you have to think it's a dialectal, but you still have to fix it. They'll have a Y and W confusion, an S and Z confusion, an A and O confusion, an F and V confusion, because they're all pretty much um, made the same way. So if they, if they look right, sound right, if they don't look right, sound right, you're going to have to fix it. <clears throat> X and K and K and W. So you're going to probably mark yes. Like I said, it's about only 5% of my kids don't mark yes. Learn about that. Oh, okay, so if they're doing substitutions, emissions, okay, so I explained this before. Let me use this very easy word, cat. So they've been exposed to this since there were four. They're now seven and coming to you. I found another reason why you want to wait for seven diagno for diagnosis the other day. Another reason why you want to wait for seven doesn't mean when they're four, five, and six, you can't start intervention. Okay, you can start intervention, but don't get a diagnosis till seven because there's a lot going on in the brain that could change. And I've done intervention in a four, five, or six year old, and then I never saw that parent again, and then never went for a diagnosis because it was fixed. Um, but anyway, that's a different story. It's, it's piling up for me. To, I'm gonna tell these parents I'm just not gonna do the class today. I'm going to move the class to another time because I'm really into teaching y'all this and I want to finish this video. So speaking of which, uh, these parents are my good, good friends because I tell them I don't charge them if they miss and I don't charge them if I miss. 
I have a, I have a 14 year old and I know she comes first and I'm going to miss. So I'm very lenient and flexible. So I could just tell them I'm not having the class. I'm going to reschedule for later. Like, okay. That's how, you know, and the parent, the kids see how close I am to their parents and um, so on and so forth. That connection is key. I'm sorry, I'm taking care of this right now. No, you're good. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so remember, mine is mostly auditory than visual. Um, so I know this very well, and it was my first year of my reading specialist program that I learned this, that um, everybody processes words the same way, whether it be written, reading, or speaking. They do, they process the first part first, second part last, and the third part second. Everybody. So what happens is, is the student that has a uh, auditory processing problem didn't process that middle part since it's the last to be processed, just gone. You know, it was not processed at all, unless you do, ah, but anyway, they haven't been taught that to, to process better. But um, so what they'll do is they'll, when they first, you start, first start working with them, it won't process at all. You might just see a CT. That's it. Not process, not there at all. And then they start to get a clue that something's supposed to be there, but they're not sure what. So they do a substitution because they hadn't processed it still. Um, next, they're so smart and so confused what it could be. Sometimes they might uh, do a repetition in that middle position. And sometimes they might just do an addition in the middle position. That doesn't make any sense. That's all for the word cat. So um, you're gonna go look at that writing sample that you had done for the auditory processing and see how many of those omissions, deletions, substitutions were made if that middle sound wasn't processed. And you're gonna put it here. Okay, so next we're gonna look at interactive interact inaccurate and disfluent word recognition fusion sounds may be being fused or jumped. i just did a lot of that but just kidding i didn't do that much of it um so even reading they'll do this let me show y'all what i'm talking about so uh, all of my classes just about have quid quizlets attached to it need to be reading real words. When do I get to real words? Um, do a lot of nonsense words uh, for a lot of reasons when we start first turn and then I turn to for real words. There's a whole bunch of reasons for that, but that's when I go over the classes. Um, let me see if I have real words here. Oh, I do, I do. Okay. Um, so shag, and then it's a when you automatically turn to the other word, they're gonna take parts of this next word that's coming up. And so shag will be here. And then now this might be shig. So they've taken what was there before and putting it on to what is here. Um, Cause they're still processing what was before. When things change quickly, our mind is still in the past and our mind can also still be in the future. So when it comes fused together, it'll be a nonsense word like shig. So you'll hear them say nonsense words. They'll read nonsense words that they're making up, but you, they know you're working on real words here. You've been working by, by them for a couple of slides. It's that uh, auditory fusion of words, the mind being hypo or hyper. But you want to, you want to, you want them to speed up their word recall and their automaticity in it. So you still continue on. You just have them relook at it. So you, you say, oh, I heard you say shig. If it was shig, what letter would be? Your, oh, 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 a G. That's right. Let's read this one again. Sh -i ship. Okay. So anyway, so that's the fusion. This is what I liked least or like least about my neuro 
Diversity is my fusions when I'm speaking. So I'm thinking of what I said in the past or coming up in the future, and so not fun. Um, so anyway, um, hard time with diction and transcription writing because the working memory executive issues. So dream could be read or spelled uh, dram, dream, read, drum, all these different names um, when they're dictating or transcribing. So I don't normally check for this because I have, I don't get them to dictate anything like a sentence or a word or anything. Uh, not a word, we've already done word once, but a phrase or anything because I got enough up there. I don't need to get that. Okay, so then um, if I still want more, if I still need more, I'm gonna do phonological awareness. I'm gonna check for only if I need more. That again, I have enough right now to tell you if it's auditory. Okay, I'm gonna give you the word crumb. What is the first sound you hear? What is the last sound? What's the middle sound? Oh, so on. Give me another word that has the first sound is like in the word crumb. I'm gonna give it to you, then you ask them how many syllables. So on and so forth. Checking phonological awareness only if I need to. Because remember, there's seven when I do this. And so they've been exposed to phonological awareness like ridiculously. And then if they've had problems when we're getting an intervention, it's been on phonological awareness. So it's not my emphasis here. My emphasis is looking at again, are they processing that middle sound doing or doing substitutions, omissions, repetitions? That's what I'm focused on. So anyway, you can mark where they are on phonological awareness on that continuum, but I, I don't need it. Um, now, let's say they are a two here, so they don't need intervention on it. This person is majority visual processing, and there are some problems in auditory that you address the visual first because it was a three. This auditory is a two, so you, you do address it, but after the visuals being addressed. So you see them starting to make progress with the vision therapist and what I have to teach you what to do to help with visual processing, like avoiding black and white, putting overlays on everything, making sure it's large font. So I'll even go that large if I have to. Another reason why I like looking at the type of font, okay? The font is very important for visual process. So I'm still doing intervention with them on a two, uh, but I'm moving most of my concentration into the auditory for this child, this hypothetical child. Okay, so then I look at specific language impairment. And a lot of these you're not gonna get unless you talk to the parents. So you might as well either wait or ask the parents these about specific language impairment. Um, improper use of words and their meanings, like dinner, lunch. Uh, problems with word recall. You can see them then stuttering and using hand gestures, lots of hand gestures to help get the word out. So some people complain about my amount of hand gestures that I use on, but it helps me fluently get my words out. Um, but that's a sign of specific language impairment uh, and word recall. Inappropriate grammar patterns is, are, was, were, he, she, us. So this part of my learning diversity was horrible as a child because I would do is for are, was. So people think I, I, what didn't come from an educated family or my mom didn't work on English as well and had problems with grammar, but it wasn't that, it was a specific, specific language impairment, which we know I have. So it's kind of sad and it still makes me feel bad when I do an is for an R and I know all the rules. I know all the rules by heart. Okay, so uh, now reduced vocabulary. Woo. People with, uh, People with dyslexia have great vocabulary. People with dyslexia with a specific language impairment will have to get looked at by a speech and language pathologist. All of these are with a speech and language pathologist. I don't know who this is. I don't know who this is. 
I don't want to stop my video. And I don't wanna, okay, they'll just text me. So, um, so all of these need to be seen by the speech and language pathologist. Should the speech and language pathologist only address language and then to go to see somebody like or Gillingham trained person, um, if they don't have a specific language impairment, they should just work with the Orton Gillingham person. But if they're seeing somebody for the specific language impairment, you might as well work on their all the auditory processing and their sounds. Doesn't mean that you still can't do intervention. Oh my goodness gracious, people. So sad. I guess they didn't get my text. So uh, let's pretend like this child, remember, is mostly visual and then auditory. Let's look at their their language. It's also, it's going to be a four. I'm going to make this hypothetical child a four because much of the emphasis is put on how they read and not how they're putting the syntax together and how they're speaking, that this their specific language parents get ignored all the time related to just language, simple language stuff. Nobody picks up on it. They're checking the sounds. They're too busy checking the, uh, what's that name of that assessment that goes into the public schools? Dibbles. They're too busy checking the dibbles and the sounds. They're not even thinking about this now, even though there's a speech and language pathologist on hand sometimes. So. Now you have to figure out if it's expressive, repetitive, or, or uh, okay, expressive, receptive. I spelled it wrong. What did I do, Susan? With this word, what letter did I? Which position and what kind? Uh, there's an E after the C. Deletion in the middle position happens most frequent because no, yeah, no e after the p. Okay, and I did it. Oh, that's a transposition. That's the uh, visual. There you go. Yeah, that's a transposition. So, um, okay, so or mixed. Now, um, that's where expressive, you're listening for what's above. Receptive is you're having to repeat the directions on everything, like with the writing sample. I need you to write this word here on this side and go write this word. They're like, what was it again? They can't take two to three directions. And mixed meaning it's either both of these. So it's very important to look for specific language impairment. Next, for dysgraphia, you're going to check fine motor skills. And for dysgraphia, you're going to also check gross motor skills. People don't seem to understand that. But um, you're also going to check for dyspraxia. If it's dyspraxia, it's both fine and gross, and it's everything else listed above. Okay, all threes and fours and everything else listed above. So check their fine motor skills by asking the parent most of these because you can't look you can't we don't have a video camera thrown on to see um but you can do a writing sample um and you'll see lots of erase mark i have it on here um but i'm getting ready to go because people are still trying to get on they're just like not getting the text um so you're gonna still look for a lot of erasing you're going to look for um, for dysgraphia. Uh, the organization will be off and what they're saying. So it's like um, it's not making sense what they read at all. Like the it's the sequencing's all off. And then one more thing I can't think of that's it's on here though. ADHD. You're going to have to look for ADHD because um, I used to know the percentage of people that have all of the above that I've mentioned along with ADHD. So now let me put a preface to this. I do ADHD if it's so noticeable in the child and there's specific reading things that I see. Um, so I don't do it till later. And or if the parent asked me for the ADHD one. Like I'm talking to them about their spelling and, and reading and they go, but I think also my dad, her, my husband has ADHD. And I think they might as I can check that for you. Um, so we can look to see what ADHD 
It's the same thing with autism. Um, you can check autism if they mention it to you because I have one on here for autism. I have one on Erlen syndrome. Uh, if, they, if they ask you or you, they have autism, I'm going to ask them, do you want me to do an Erlen screening? Because that's the light processing. And I use a lot of graphic organizers in my class. So if I notice there's, their eyes are watering, they're squinting a lot, that, that they're really being messed up by the graphic orders, I might want to do the Erlen screening. <laughs> so um, that's it. So that's all I want to go over now because um, I'm going to try to do that class. I'll probably split this up and do this again next Friday. And the main thing is, is we got the main ones out of the way. We got looking at the auditory processing, the visual processing, the specific language impairment. So based on what they come to you for, you do the extent of this that you need to do, and this would take one session or one? Uh, no, just uh, so 45 minutes, uh, three times. Okay. Yeah. I know. can. I was thinking it was longer. yeah oh yeah 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 okay and sometimes it's less like no sometimes I don't even get past hardly anything and be able to have it you know mm -hmm. have all that I need okay well I'll let y'all go I'll see y'all next Friday yep thank you okay bye, bye.